G'day folks, it's Rob here and thanks for coming along to check out the latest garden vlog. This week's clip we'll be looking at turning some weed trees into weed suppressing mulch uh, just around the back garden beds here. And the second part of the clip will be checking out the first harvest from the mango tree. So pretty chuffed to have a couple in a tray ripening up in the house at the moment. Uh, just before we get cracking though, I really do need to send out a huge thanks to all of you folks out there in YouTube land for the support you've shown us through the year here. Uh, we've had a few things going on behind the scenes that have slowed both Bianca and I uh, down a fair bit, but 2018 looks like it's going to be a cracker. As soon as we get the uh, quotes back from the builders, we'll start renovating the house and we've got some pretty big plans throughout the back here as well, which I'll be filming and sharing with you folks. Also need to send out a huge thanks and g'day to the marvellous folks who are supporting us over on the Patreon website. Um, thanks not only for your support there, but also for the friendships that we've built uh, through the Hangouts and also other online correspondence. Uh, you guys have helped me out as well on things like gardening and aquaponic pointers and also uh, starting to help me out with a few crypto hints. So thank you very much, folks. So I'll stop rabbiting on and we'll get stuck into the clip and I'll see you at the end. Afternoon, folks. Thought I'd give you a bit of a look at uh, just what I've been up to today. It's Sunday, by the way. Had a bit of a busy weekend. But this afternoon after we did some running around we came out the back didn't we lizzie we've done a bit of work and we just need to finish off some other bits and pieces b's got some funky pots to transplant out the little succulents she had growing in the aquaponics so that's just those guys over the back there uh, there's only a couple in there and they're going to be potted up and given away as gifts to some friends of hers uh, the rest of the aquaponics uh, got barely any attention at all this weekend. I did squish a few aphids. I was supposed to um, empty out that bed, um, empty out some of the plants in that bed and try and flood it and get some um, slugs out. But yeah, we got sidetracked uh, visiting some friends yesterday, which was great too, always is. Down the back here, I did a little bit of um, mulching of Chinese elm, or sorry, Chinese seltus. And just right over here in the back corner, I've dumped a lot of the, um, the mulched tree material just to help keep weeds down in this area here. And then again, just over here too, uh, just between these uh, beds or barrels and beds. And the aim is to um, mulch just this whole section here and then in between the IBC. Not necessarily that back pathway because I don't want it to um, wash down into the neighbor's place. I need to actually clean out and... Um, Expose that timber because it's yeah, got a bit of organic matter sitting on it. We don't want it to rot out. So this back pathway here has just been mulched with the uh, turmeric that I chopped down um, from the harvest, last harvest in this bed. And as you can see, this bed is becoming quite productive all by itself with some volunteer yellow currant tomatoes. We've got some Egyptian spinach down here. And of course, all the turmeric that I've missed. So this bed will probably just be left alone now. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way it's gone. Uh, around over the back here, just to give you a bit of a gander. I did chop through a lot of the warrigal greens. Some of them had been taken off and processed. The rest of it I just hit down with the whippersnipper. Uh, mainly because we have seen the tail of a brown snake over towards the fence line over there. Goes through under one of the Chinese seltus. So I figure I like to um, be able to see where I walk. So we thought we'd knock that down with the whippersnipper. I'm going to, um, or line trim or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to level out that soil around there and back up around here. And before I um, do too much damage though, I want to grab some of this um, sweet potato, volunteer sweet potato. As you can see, there's some roots at some of the junctions and um, put that into a barrel along with some, um, some others I got set aside. I have a feeling that's the white, uh, purple flesh, uh, sorry, purple skin, white fleshed sweet potato. So we haven't grown them for a few years. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. And for you folks who have been asking about the chicken coop, uh, nothing happened at all this weekend with the chicken coop. <laughs> Not at all. I did do a bit of a clean out. Uh, by the way, this is Southern Cone Marigold. I have had people um, suggest that maybe I'm growing some um, pot out the back here or marijuana, cannabis. But no, that's Southern Cone Marigold. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to pack up this um, uh, mulcher. I'm going to pack up the mulcher. I'm just going to put a container over the top just to keep the rain out of it and leave it down here because I need to knock off um, this final celtus here. And I've got a little bit on this one here that needs to come off as well. 
and we'll mulch that up and um, add to all the other bits and pieces. Just quickly, I've got to say that I was really impressed with how that little saw from Silky worked. It just cut straight through that um, Chinese saltus a lot quicker than using the uh, bypass loppers I've been using in the past and a lot less stressful on the old um, arms as well. Just a quick little motion and an almost, you know, almost a scything motion to cut through the small fine stuff. We might even actually add in some of the, um, the Queensland arrowroot too. Sorry, need to swing this smoothie around. Uh, the Queensland arrowroot, I'll mulch some of that up and put it down, maybe just over the back area down in there. And over here, um, this trough is actually supposed to work as a bit of a um, reservoir for some root pouches until it gets um, fitted into the aquaponic system but yeah more on that at a later time so anyway i will pretty much all leave it there just a bit of a roundup on what i've been up to this afternoon whoops i left my camera down here better take that up but yeah i'll leave it there hope you're all well and happy and i will catch you later how's it going folks looks like we have a couple of mangoes that are getting a little bit of a blush on their shoulders ripening up so I'm going down to harvest a few using my little contraption here. It's just a bit of a limb lopper with a flower pot or a pot, plant pot, uh, zip tied onto it. So the idea is to hopefully be able to um, lop them off there and have them drop in the bucket because some of them are a bit high up. I'll just give you a bit of a quick look at what I did yesterday and the day before. We've mulched all around these garden beds down here now to help suppress any weeds including all these little um, Egyptian spinach that are popping up everywhere. And I have some Queensland arrowroot over there I need to uh, just mulch up and pop over there. But anyway, back to the mangoes. Just to give you a bit of a look at why I'm trying to um, harvest some today, the local rat bags, <laughs> fruit bats, and the possums are hooking into them. So as soon as they get a little bit of um, color to them, uh, they start to be attacked by the local wildlife. You might be able to make out there. There's a couple of maggots that have crawled out of this one. So this one's obviously been blown by the Queensland fruit fly as well. So I'm just going to squish them quickly. Um, yeah, so what I've decided to do is to take off any that have a little bit of a blush of colour on them like that. I don't know how well that's coming out in the um, camera there. There's a couple just up the top there. A nice big one there. And there's also ones that are split as well. So I'll probably try and get rid of them. So I think I might start off with these guys up here and then um, yeah, we'll move around to some on the other side. Uh, I've actually got a camera set up at the back stairs so you might be able to see how this little contraption works. I'll do my best to set up the camera here on the phone. We'll see how we go. So I've got the camera set up just down there. Hopefully it'll catch the action. There we go. One very nice looking mango right there. So I'll go and collect a few more of these and I'll give you a look at the end once I've um, got them all in the tray. So just gonna try for this one up here, I think. Awesome. Excuse me, Lizzie. That's another nice looking fruit and it doesn't look like there's any fruit fly sting in there either, which is a bit of a bonus. So there you go folks, there's the pickings for today. We've got 15 mangoes, a few of them, like these small ones, have got a bit of a blush on them. They were the ones on top of the um, aquaponics and there's another one there. I took them off, even if they don't ripen up, we'll still use them in um, salads. So that's not a problem at all. Uh, the rest of the mangoes here, they're looking, you know, pretty nice and sizable. Not gonna complain about any of these. Um, <laughs> a little fella like that, you know, he's gonna go down a treat. I haven't seen uh, any sign of fruit fly hitting these guys. At the moment, they look to be hitting the ones that are already damaged, whether it's where bats have held on or onto them and they've broken the skin. So fingers crossed we won't find any extra protein in these guys when we chow down on them. So I will um, bring you along and show you um, future harvests as well because there are a few. If I can swing this little smoothie thing around, there are a few over here that we need to take off uh, above the aquaponics. And there's also a few on the neighbor's side of the fence. I'll ask them if um, I can jump the fence and grab them because I don't think he's going to be able to eat all of those. 
Also too, there's always the ones that are right up the top there that I can't always get. They're the ones we like to donate to the local wildlife. Uh, there's probably about, oh, I can see about a dozen just in that area there, that bit of canopy. So we do like to um, share it when we can with the natives. So there we go, folks, just a little bit of a look at a mango harvest. So there you go, folks, there's a little bit of an update on what's been going on around the place this week. Uh, next weekend, there won't be a main clip. I'm still working on an aquaponic update for this weekend, but there won't be a main clip next weekend and possibly the weekend after. But there will be these little update vlogs if you want to come along and suss them out. It's been suggested that I'm spending a little bit too much time online at the moment, helping others and not having a crack at our own place. So I need to really get stuck into the chicken coop and pulling out a couple more garden beds. So they'll be filmed and you'll be able to suss them out after Christmas and after the New Year's. I'd also like to wish you all a very happy Christmas, holidays or celebrations, however you like to spend this time of year. For us, we don't really get up to much. It's very low key. We'll be spending the day out in the backyard sweltering in 36 degree or 95 Fahrenheit heat. Uh, while I know other people are enjoying the nice white Christmas over in the States and Europe. So it's, it's a pretty low key affair really for us. We'll have some um, friends come over, uh, Mark and Alison, g'day folks. And also I think we're um, having one of May's friends over who's got nowhere to lodge, she's away from her family. So a, a little bit of a low key affair. And then on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, we'll be hooking up with the family, um, eating salads and exchanging presents and that sort of thing. Oh, Boxing Day, for you folks who may not know, isn't a day where we all get together and box each other and kangaroos and that sort of thing. It's an old British tradition. Uh, it goes back to when the servants used to get a box the day after Christmas, a Christmas box. So that's where it comes from. Uh, we're not into bashing up our native wildlife for the most part here in Australia. So there you go. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this little bit of a catch-up vlog and I will catch you next clip. Cheers all. Have a top one.